morgen, velkommen tilbake til oss. Bøker. Ja, vi skal snakke om bøker og om en veldig, veldig spesiell forfatter. For hvor ofte skjer det ikke at man har et slags behov for å henvende seg til høyere makter om et eller annet? Og så er det liksom rungende taust. Skjer ingenting for ingen svar. Nei vel, har du det sånn? Ja, det skjer fra tid til annen, det skal jeg innrømme. Du har det helt sikkert sånn du også. Men her sitter en kar som ikke bare henvender seg til Gud, han får også klinkende klare svar tilbake. Om alt fra parforhold til pengespørsmål til hvordan det er på jobben og alt mulig. Mange liv han har levd før og så videre. Dette skriver han ned. Ja, dette er samtaler med Gud. Og mannen heter Neil Donald Walsh, har gitt ut 27 bøker som selger i milliontall over hele verden. Nå er han i Norge, på Norges visitt, for å holde foredrag i kveld i Oslo og i overimorgen i Bergen. Velkommen til oss, Neil. Takk, det er veldig hyggelig å være her. Dette er din første gang i Norge, ikke? Ja. Ja. Og det alle startet for deg i de tidlige 90-tallene? Ja, ma'am. Yeah, my, my. Uh, before 27 books and a lot of success, yes. you were living on the street. Yes. And you haven't heard this voice in your head yet. No, no, no. My life had really fallen apart. What happened was that I had three catastrophes at the same time. My health was going very rapidly downhill. I lost uh, my job. I, I wasn't able to work. I had a terrible car accident in which I broke my neck. And so I couldn't work. I could hardly move. I was very lucky, frankly, to be alive, but I, I survived the accident, but I, I was out of work, and then I ran out of government benefits after a few months, and I had nowhere to go, as life turned out, and so I wound up living on the street uh, for a year, and, and of course I was desperate, and I was surviving by just asking people for a few pennies, a few dollars, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and collecting the soda cans and beer bottles for the deposit that you get back at the store. And that's how I lived for a year outside, slept on the street, slept in doorways or wherever I could get out of the weather. And, uh, and I learned a great deal about survival and about who we are and how life works during that time. But then, then came a turning point. Yes, well, I became so angry, you see. I, I, I was 50 years old. I wasn't a young man. If I'd have been 30 or 25 or even 40, I would have said, well, I can do this. I can survive. But I was 50, and uh, I, I was very angry. And I, I was, uh, when I finally did get a little part-time job, I found myself asking God, what does it take to make life work? What have I done to deserve a life of such continuing struggle? And uh, somebody tell me the rules. I don't understand the rule book. Somebody give me the rules. And I began, I began uh, crying out. And one night in the middle of the night, I, had, uh, I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I was pacing around the house, and I was shouting, really, shouting at God, give me some answers. And uh, in my experience, God did. I heard a voice in the room that said, you know, if you want some answers, I'll give them to you. And, and the rest is a history yes. of a, uh, a literary success and maybe uh, something more than that, 27 books, and uh, you traveling all around the world, giving lectures. Uh, Christian Flod, du, du kjenner Wallstro og kjente ham i ti år. Du er ute med jakten på en annen rikdom i Frans Assisis uh, fotspor. Du sitter her avbildet og ser over mot Assisi. Her er jeg litt kjent, skjønner du. Det er den mest kommersielle byen i hele Italien, er jo Assisi da. For der får du kjøpt absolutt alt av relikver. Men sett han inn i en sammenheng. Hvem er han? Altså det som slo meg da jeg møtte Nil for ti år siden, jeg møtte han faktisk i Oslo på en workshop han hadde i håndverkeren, det var at hans måte å presentere det gudomlige eller Gud, det var en helt ny modell som han presenterte. Og en modell som plutselig hang sammen med noe i meg. Noe som ga gjenklang, og hvor jeg sa, aha, ja, dette stemmer jo. Så en av de tingene, for eksempel, som han slo meg da, det var at hans gudsportrett, dette nye gudsportrett han presenterer, er en slags helhetsmodell. Det er ikke... Det separerer oss ikke, skiller oss ikke fra hverandre på denne planeten som en menneskehet, men samler oss. Så denne dialogen han har med Gud, det er i bunn og grunn en dialog med en klok stemme som han har inni seg, som han kaller Gud. Ja. Og den stemmen har vi alle. Ja, og det er jo det som 
er revolusjonerende, synes jeg. Og derfor så kaller jeg den forestillingen på konserthuset i kveld for en slags åndelig spirituell revolusjon. Fordi at det å si at vi alle sammen kan ha en kontakt hvis vi våger å ta kontakt og åpne oss. Og det skjer her i hjertet. Det er spesielt. Det er nytt, og det er en liten revolusjon, ja. Men Neil, for å kommunikere direkte med Gud, har noen spørsmål spørsmålet deg? Jeg mener, er det noe galt med deg? Av hvert fall, er jeg galt? Er du galt? Av hvert fall, alle. Jeg mener, en galt galt person ville spørre en spørsmål. Men jeg vil gjøre noe veldig veldig klart. Det jeg har forstått er at det er veldig... Everyone can talk to God, and we do it. In, we all do it. We, we call it prayer, or we may call it meditation. Uh, but we all have our ways of communicating with the divine, and we also receive information. I mean, messages from the divine in many, many ways: inspiration, creativity, and so forth. Uh, you know, Isaac Newton gets a wonderful idea. Mozart gets the, the melodies for his songs. Thomas Jefferson writes a, uh, an incredible Declaration of Independence. People have extraordinary uh, moments of creativity and insight. And it raises an interesting question: Where do those ideas come from? And I think that they all come from what I call God. So I don't see that my experience is unusual. And the point that I make in the books is that I do not have an unusual experience, although it is unusual to talk about it, mm -hmm. because people will think that you're crazy. So many million uh, people have bought your book, read it. They buy all of them. They go to your lectures. What does that say about you know the search for a better life, a right life? I think it says that people are losing patience with uh, the human experience as it has been. I think humanity as a whole is losing patience with itself. I don't think we have the answers, but I think we do have the questions. And I think that we're searching, all of us are searching for a better way mm -hmm. to be human, collectively and individually. And we're being more open-minded now than I think we might have been 15 or 20 or 50 years ago. We're open to at least explore new thoughts and new ideas. I always say to people when they come to my lectures, don't take my word for it. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. But can we at least have a dialogue? Can we be open to each other's ideas? Because it's only through the exploration of new pathways to God and new ways of being human that we can create them. So I think that's why people come to my lectures. Kristin, mm. veldig, veldig kort helt til slutt. Hva er det folk kommer til å få møte når de møter ham? Ganske kort. De møter seg selv. Fordi han gir gjenklang et eller annet sted i seg selv. Så de møter Neil som er en fantastisk mann til å forklare, sette ord på det som er vanskelig å sette ord på, og samtidig så møter de noe inni seg selv. She is saying a lot of good things about you. That's very sweet. We'll translate later. Thank you. Make sure you get it. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today, and good luck in Bergen and in Oslo. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Vi skal ha musikk nå helt til slutt, Jan Øyvind.